Hey there guys, welcome to our clinical radiology applications overview talk, a bit of a mouthful, for the 2021-2022. This is part one. Now, we had done this talk, I want to say back in May, we were meant to get it out for you guys, but unfortunately the recording on Zoom got corrupted, and then we've kind of pushed it to the back as we've been quite busy with clinical things. My name is Mohammed, by the way, I'm one of the Radcast co-founders alongside Uzoma, and Jamie. So this is part one of four of the uh, Radcast overview of the applications for the 2021-2022 talk. So basically last year. So like I said, this is part one of part four. What we're going to cover in this one is number one, the major changes that happened in the 2021-2022 cycle, basically last year's application. Look at the timeline because the dates or the vague idea of dates you should have an awareness of because it's probably going to be similar for this year, 2022-2023 cycle. Look at the ranking process, how was your final rank determined? Finally, look at things like competition ratios, because if you get an idea of the trend line, you can get an idea of realistically what application competition you're gonna face when you apply. And then finally, how to get application support from us at Radcast. And then you can see what we're gonna cover in part two, the MSRA, the biggest load of crap we've ever come across, part three, looking at the verified self-assessment, basically the new and improved, well, sort of improved portfolio station. And then finally, part four, the interview station and the major changes that happened to the interview format as of this year. Now, I wanna make it crystal clear about what we're not going to cover, right? I think if you this applies to you, I don't wanna be wasting your time. So number one, application to Northern Ireland. That is a totally different application system to the England, Scotland and Wales, okay? So if you are applying to Northern Ireland, then please make sure you look at Oriel for the up-to-date information. Your application is a bit different. Yes, these talks will give you an idea of what to potentially expect, but the format itself is different. Number two, if you're applying to the Academic Clinical Fellowship, you should be aware of the different timelines. You apply earlier in October, there are white space answers, you get interviewed earlier and then you just need to be deemed appointable. But if you are in this category, you're applying for the ACF, please get in touch. We've been supporting candidates more and more so for the ACF every year, and we need to give you more personalized support compared to those applying to the clinical, national clinical applications. And then also, we're not gonna cover why all other specialties hate on us, all right? We know we're the best, and as Taylor Swift correctly said, haters are going to hate, but we're not going to delve into that and to be honest nobody got time for that either so let's get straight into it now the major changes to the radiology application process this is what we're now going to cover the big one was this additional round four now every year we get asked this oh muhammad Uzoma, jamie is there going to be a round two is there going to be a round three well in the 2021 2022 there was a round four now people got uh, invited to this around November time and they said oh by the way this is an extension of the 2020-2021 cycle and candidates were only assessed on the MSRA and portfolio there was no interview for this additional round four and you had to be eligible to start training between the 1st of February to the 31st of March this year all right now so if you're a foundation year two that's not like yeah let me apply no, because you're still in foundation training, you can't leave. But there were approximately 50 posts that were up for grabs, mainly in the Kent, Surrey and Sussex region, like London, and they all pretty much got filled. Now, like I said, this isn't a definitive, like this doesn't happen every year. Some rounds only go up to round two in certain years, some rounds only go up to round one. But it was something to be aware of because it did happen in the 2022 2020 uh 2021 2022 cycle it could happen this year but don't bet on it like don't wait for an additional round that's a waste of your time it's not being productive and really it's just going to add stress to you if it happens and you're eligible go for it but if not don't stress about it this was another big thing which we kind of think was way overdue like it genuinely we do think this was way overdue the introduction of direct entry to ST3 radiology. Now, this was for the first time ever, it ever happened, like people beforehand only could get into ST1. 
But if you had 18 months or more of experience in clinical radiology, then hey ho, you were not eligible. You were basically over exposed to radiology. So you weren't eligible to enter training. So now those that had additional the time with rad within radiology, more than 18 months, could now apply for entry into SD3. Now, the criteria for this was like super strict. Like when we reviewed it, we were like, damn, this is for a specific cohort of individuals, basically candidates in radiology who are training abroad. Like you, you look at the criteria, you're like, okay, I do not have any of this unless you're in radiology training somewhere in the world, all right? So you had to be like signed off by an FRCR qualified consultant radiologist. You had to give your reporting numbers. The interview format was different to the national application for ST1. They asked you, okay, um, you're the ST3 radiology reg. You get on call scan for this. How would you escalate? Oh, can you tell me your experience of CT? Basically, if you never step foot in the department, you're going to get absolutely shafted, okay? Now, for this one, it was a portfolio scoring and it was an interview. There was no MSRA involved. Once again, probably indicating the relevance of the cohort, who, who they had specifically targeted, because these people were so knees deep into radiology, the rest of their clinical acumen may not be that great, and it wouldn't be a good use of their time to make them go off and prepare for the MSRA. Now, you may argue, well, Mohammed, should that be the case of ST1? Listen, I'm not going to get into what we feel about the MSRA. Um, this is being recorded for YouTube, and if I start to swear, I'll have to put like filters on. I'm not that good at editing, so I'm not going to bother. And here you can see just a overview of the 2021-2022 recruitment timeline. Don't focus on the specific dates. It's irrelevant because it's done. So why bother? But just look at the months. Remember for ACF, you're applying earlier in October. And by the way, this is only for ST1. ST3s had a different timeline entirely. Then you upload your portfolio evidence around December to January time. And that then gets verified by the assessors at the RCR. Then you sit the dreaded MSRA and just pray that your scores are sufficient to get shortlisted for an interview, which was in February time, once again virtual, but we'll discuss that in another part of this application series. Around March time, mid-March, the initial office came out. Why at 5 p.m.? I have no idea because that's so stressful and if anything goes wrong, you have nobody to speak to because they've all gone home, but hey ho, it's what you're part of when you apply for clinical radiology. And then of course, you are starting your training on around 6th of August of the subsequent year. That may differ depending upon the deanery. Some deaneries start later, some deaneries start at the time of handover in August, but that's entirely dependent on the training deanery. But look at the timelines. November, you'll apply. Around December time, you'll submit your evidence for your portfolio. January time, you'll set the MSRA. February time, you'll get an interview, touch wood, and then initial offers. Hopefully, you'll all get your first rank offers in around March of the subsequent year. Now, when it comes to your final ranking, it was kind of back to the status quo in the sense that a third of your final rank, so 33%, came from the MSRA score, which was converted from a raw score into a scale score. 33% came from your ver verified portfolio self-assessment. And then the final third came from your interview performance. The top 55 MSRA score getting a direct offer wasn't used. We're not sure if it'll be used this year. That's directly up to the application process people in charge. But for the 2021, 2022, it wasn't used. Now, your rank works in two ways. Number one, whether you meet the threshold to be deemed eligible for a training number, like you have to meet a certain rank, there's a cutoff where you're deemed appointable. And then finally, your preferred deanery. When you rank them all, the top ranking candidates get their top choice dibs. Basically, they get dibs on where they want to go. And then, of course, those who aren't deemed appointable will not be allowed to then enter into one of their rank deaneries. And then the process just works uh, in the back end through Oriel, where it looks at your rank, looks at what you've ranked, sees if there's a spot. If there is, hey ho, congratulations, good luck with your training. If not, okay, second de deanery that you've ranked and so forth and so forth until either all the spots are filled or there are no more spots available and meaning now you're put on the uh, short list 
for an additional round if there is basically if any candidates drop out they decide i want to do something else i don't want to enter this year then you may get an offer in to that rank deanery provided you ranked it in the first place now this is a very important slide and i would advise you to look at it with a pinch of salt because we don't actually know the up-to-date application competition for the 2021 2022 that's why it's in red the first row but we're now edging into pre shortlisting for interview this is pre shortlisting for interview please this is not for post interview it gets less because obviously a lot of candidates have been filtered out from the msra but pre shortlisting for interview you're looking at around five applicants per place now afterwards traditionally it's been around three applicants per place but that's slowly creeping up if you're unsure why the reason is because medicine is on the uk workforce shortage list meaning that applicants both in the uk and abroad provided they meet the eleg eligibility criteria which is for example a crest form if they're not in uk training can directly apply meaning you're not only applying with other uk national students but also those abroad meaning that across all specialties not just radiology but radiology has been traditionally uh, attractive anyway because it's awesome has led to an increase year upon year like for 2017 look it was 3.51 now 2022 with the official figures pre shortlisting for interview it's 4.75 it's creeping up and we think based upon trends it's going to creep up even further it's not as ludicrous as neurosurgery or public health but it is creeping up and you need to be aware of it because this this makes it so important you maximize your application so how do you do that Mohammed? well that was a great transition don't you think and a great tangent into the next part of this talk so in a nutshell you need to start preparing now now you may be doing a slow clap saying Muhammad wow like this is so mind-blowing yes you're, you're just like a philosoph philosopher how do you think of these things I know I'm preaching to the choir but genuinely every point now matters more than ever and it's going to continue with the trend the fact that radiology is getting a lot of investment for training numbers because of the workforce shortage being more profound within clinical radiology and other specialties like histopathology but you need to really like capture as many high yield points as possible that's why we advocate start preparing now and honestly like we're not going to shill you anything uh, this is not the point of these application talks really if you want some personalized application support just get in touch either myself Uzoma Jamie will pick up the emails we'll outline the how the portfolio scored what we'd recommend for MSRA just literally have a chat with you guys because career support kind of sucks uh, in med school it sucks as a foundation school um, like it's very poor and rather than just like preaching to you about oh blah 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 we'll just have a chat maybe radiology isn't for you and if it isn't for you we'll outline okay why don't you think of going looking into other careers have you thought about taster weeks and so and so but if radiology is for you and you're like no Muhammad, i want to get in this year then of course we'll help you out we'll say okay what have you got so far on your portfolio this is where we think you can get some high yield improvements don't bother with this crap meta-analysis going to take you a year then they'll get rejected in peer review or ask for amendments so what was the point it won't count don't apply for this expensive pg cert because you know you're going to have a certificate by the time you apply what was the point save your three thousand five hundred um, pounds at the point of recording this it's probably going to get more expensive save your money and go on holiday and work on a case report instead like genuinely like it's not hard if you understand the system and we will help you and personalize the support we can give you so that's part one done guys obviously move on to part two part three part four whatever stage of the application process you're at or curious about like i said get in touch hello at radcast.co.uk you can see our social medias just drop us a dm slide into our dms if you want to we're more than happy to reply link us on our facebook group or twitter just tweet at us um, we will eventually pick it up either myself uzoma or jamie and we'll let you know but thank you for listening guys take care please do like and subscribe to our channel it's growing because of you guys we love to see it and we want to grow even more with you guys along the journey take care guys see you later